Welcome back to the Lone Star Under the Rising Sun podcast. This is Shay. Did you miss me? Yeah, I uh, I really need to make this a little bit more consistent. But in due time, in due time, it's coming. Don't worry your pretty little heads. This podcast will soon. And I quote again, I quote myself on this, uh, soon it will come back to being a regular thing. I'm, I'm kind of done with uh, the YouTube videos. I'll be, I'll be putting these episodes up on YouTube. And I, you know, I might occasionally throw up a, a nice video on YouTube of, of me walking around exploring, exploring Japan. But, you know, these, uh, I've, I've really gotten sick and tired, especially, especially about, uh, people in Japan. I've gotten really sick and tired of these vloggers just sitting in front of a camera and blathering away. For, for no purpose. You know, if you have a purpose to what you're trying to say and you can get people to watch you for it, then, you know, by all means, by all means, have at it. But what I've noticed, uh, a lot of these so-called vloggers in Japan are, they get these really nice cameras. They invest so much money in these cameras, but... The quality of their video in terms of substance is nothing. There is absolutely nothing of value in these videos. And it just, it boggles my mind why some people find unboxing videos of some thing they got at Pikachu land or, or eating snacks from a Japanese convenience store entertaining. I mean, there, it, there's just so much of it out there now that's, that has been done that anything new about that, it, you know, what, what is the point of that? What is the point? But, you know, I'm not here to bitch and complain. I'm here to actually talk about some things that might be of interest to some people. Uh, maybe I'm just talking to myself. Who knows? But... What I'm actually here to talk about, and I'll get to it. Just, just, uh, just be patient now. You like, you like that I'm stalling? I'm not really stalling. I, uh, I'm just doing it on purpose. Yeah. Anyway, if you're still listening, I'm going to talk about a few things that I did cover on YouTube some time ago, but those videos are gone. Today, I'd like to talk about my experience learning Japanese from scratch and how difficult it is or wasn't for me to learn Japanese. I'm just going to preface this now. I'm not saying that learning Japanese will be a walk in the park or it's it's not something that's super easy, but I th- you know, I think a lot of people really just get it in their heads that it's impossible and their brains aren't wired for it and blah, blah, blah. They make all these excuses as to why they can't learn Japanese or anything else. And that sort of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you tell yourself over and over and over that you can't do something, you can't. You won't be able to do it. But if you get in your head that A, there's a chance that you could do it. B, you truly believe that you can do it or even see that there's just a a little inkling of interest in what you're doing, then it will come. It will come. And I think one of the biggest problems is a lot of people face when they try and learn a language especially or, you know, these days almost anything of skill is they don't have patience and they don't want to invest the time into doing it. To get good at something, it takes time and effort. It takes discipline. It takes putting in work. And a lot of people these days just don't want to put in the work. They feel that for whatever reason that they're incapable of doing it. However, 
they were raised or whatever experiences they had in their life, they feel that they can't do something because they're inadequate in some way. You know, that's horseshit. It's, it's, it's complete horseshit. I think people just make too many excuses. But again, I'm not here to bitch and complain. I'm just stating the reality of what I've seen. So my story when it comes to learning Japanese is when I first moved to Japan, I knew none. I knew no Japanese. I knew, you know, the words that you would learn growing up in America, the food and, you know, the sport, you know, sumo, sushi, all that general bullshit that you just learn through exposure, you know, and I didn't really even put in any effort into learning until I had already secured a job and got a plane ticket over to Japan. Before I before I left、uh, the United States, I bought a book on learning Japanese from the Genki series, I think, and I opened it a few times, but I really did not put in any effort into it. I, I don't know.、Um, I, for some reason, I, I just assumed that moving to a new country and not learning the language that I'd be completely fine. And what's special about Japan is you can actually move to Japan and not have to learn a lick of Japanese. I know people who have lived here for 20 years and they still. Know very, very little Japanese. Of, of course, being here 20 years, they've, they've picked up some Japanese. They understand it a bit just by living here. I mean, it's, it's inevitable that that'll happen. But I was at their level of Japanese within just a month or two of, of doing the study that I did. And that's not tooting my own horn here. It's just that's how little they know. After being here for so long. But, as I said, Japan is one of the few countries that you can move to if you're an English speaker and you won't have to learn a, a, a lick of Japanese. You don't have to. You don't have to. And if someone chooses not to do that when they move here, well, your life will be a little bit more difficult, but for the most part, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. But I didn't want to be that guy. I did not want to be that guy. So when I moved here, the job I had, I started work in the afternoon. So I left my mornings、uh, open pretty much. So a, a few, I think it was maybe a month, maybe less,、uh, after I moved here, I went to、um, a local international center and took some volunteer classes. I think I took two, two classes. And that was all I needed from that. That, that was all I needed to know that,、uh, what it, I mean, nothing against the guy who was teaching the class, but judging by the other people who were students in the class, it was a place where I was not going to progress if I stayed there. And I knew that after two lessons. The only benefit I got from that,、uh, two things, two things I got from that were, The volunteer teacher gave me a book, like a, a workbook, on how to learn the Japanese script. The, not the Chinese characters, but the, the phonetic script, the hiragana, katakana script. And the other thing I took back from that was I knew I did not need a class to learn Japanese. That's the two things that I benefited from when taking that class. So I took my book and on my, I started on my lunch breaks at work. I would, I would write down the first five characters and say them out loud on the whiteboard. And I'd erase it and I'd do it again. And while eating my lunch, I would do the same thing over and over and over. And then the next day, I would do those five again and then do five more. And then the third day, do the first ten and do five more. 
And this actually started a pattern that would become my study method, which is just do a little bit, but every day. I would do, I would study just a little bit, but every day, and it would be sort of a, a snowball effect. Uh, it, I, it snowballed to where I just, uh, my, my length of study time would increase, and it, it actually became fun. It became fun to study. And I noticed since I did it every single day, just a little bit, every single day, that I didn't so much as learn the language, I just got used to the language. I would listen, I would write, I would try and read. Actually, I didn't g gain the courage to speak until much, much later. But any sort of input that I could, I could get, I would, I would just let it soak in. I would just let it soak in. And I gave myself, a, 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 in the beginning, I did not have any set goal. It was more like enjoy the journey without an end goal in mind. It was just going to be a perpetual thing. And it's it's stayed it stayed fairly consistent for about 6 years. And at the end of those 6 years, I decided to take my very first Japanese language proficiency test. Uh and there's in Japan there are 5. There are 5 levels five being the easiest, one being the most difficult. And on my first try, I went for level two, uh, which is what a lot of people end at. Because usually level two is the, the minimum that's required to basically work in any Japanese company if you're a foreigner. Here, if you're, if you're not a native Japanese person, you need at least level two to work in most companies. So, I took it, and I passed. Long story short, I passed. And this was all from my own self-study that I did every day. Now, you might think, I can't study every single day. I just simply don't have the time. Well, neither did I. But I made time. Even if it was five minutes in the morning while having coffee and breakfast or after work or during my lunch break, or just listening to maybe a podcast or something in Japanese on my way to work. I, I did something that was some sort of benefit for me every single day, continuously for six years. Now, were there days that I missed and, and didn't study at all? Yeah, probably. But I don't remember those days. I mean, I don't remember times when I didn't study. It, it was, I was more consistent than non-consistent with it. And that was the key to studying the language as an adult, is just con being consistent. You can't go and sit in a class for an hour in a week and expect to learn anything. Th that goes for all schooling here. This is, a, okay, <laughs> time to go off on a little tangent here, but... You know, that goes for anything you want to learn. Sitting in a class one hour a week or even one hour a day will not teach you anything. You might remember some things from it, but that is not an effective way to learn. Especially to be forced into that environment and just given the information. And not, all, not everyone is a good, great teacher, you know. I had, the reason why I think I despised math growing up and did not do well in math growing up was because I just had shit teachers, you know? And that went all the way through, uh, through college, which is another waste of time, but I won't get into that. Uh, but what I did find interesting was history, and I was lucky enough to have really, really good history teachers. Ones that didn't just require me to know facts, but to, you know, to, they, 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 they wanted me to question why. Why did these things happen? And how can they either be prevented or replicated? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, that, that's, that's how I learned history. 
not about you know um what date did this happen and everything like that i mean that was part of it but it wasn't the most important part so i credit the the teachers i had growing up to to me getting an interest in in that subject but when it came to japanese i wanted to take a different approach and i'm going to give a little shout out to um a couple of methods that I infused with my own because I was influenced by a few methods but I didn't follow them to a T and I made my own way of studying. The first one uh, which helped me a lot was a website called All Japanese All the Time and the basic concept of this guy's website was just surround yourself in Japanese 24-7 whether it be reading something, listening to something, whatever. Input, 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 input for hours upon hours upon hours, days upon days upon days. And eventually you just get used to it. Well, see, that's... I incorporated as much as I could of that, but I honestly, I, I didn't do it all day, every day, because just my personality, I would get sick of it by then, and I would grow to hate it. So, for me, I only did as much as I was entertained by. If I got bored doing something with studying Japanese, I would go and do something else. Maybe in Japanese, maybe not. But if I was studying kanji, the Chinese characters, or if I was reading something and it just got tedious, I would stop and move on to something else. So, that that's another key is to keep up your motivation, you know, you just, you just stop when it gets boring and do it when it's entertaining for you. The other method that I incorporated a little bit into my study uh, is uh, Remembering the Kanji book. It's a book called Remembering the Kanji by Heisig. A lot of people use this to learn Chinese characters. And there's problems with it, though. But for me, it, it just helped me, again, get used to the Chinese characters. It helped me get used to it. It didn't really help me learn it. It just helped me get used to it. And basically, in Heisig's book, he, he basically just teaches you a rough English translation of what, the, of what it means. Some of them are actually not right at all. Uh, but most of them are just kind of a, a vague meaning of... A vague meaning of what it is in English. Um, but what was important for the Hasig method for me was learning stroke order of how to write the characters and he started off in a simple uh, with all the the simplest characters first in building upon those like a, like building blocks or something. And that's that what was helpful for me. His actual method that he teaches in the book, I didn't really follow. I tried for a little while and I just sort of fell off uh, on it. But basically he says you want to create stories based off the, the different parts of the Chinese character to help you remember the meaning and how what order it goes in. And for some people it might work. For me, it didn't really, didn't really work all that well. Uh, I tried. I tried. Just didn't. Just didn't work. But I. I liked the concept of it because it, it was a different approach to learning. So I took those two methods, modified what I could from it, took what I could from it, and applied it to my own study habits. And I kind of just made a, a hybrid of their of their uh, study methods plus mine. And tools that really helped me were electronic flashcard systems. Um, the most common one you might see now is called Anki, A-N-K-I, and I still use that today, still use that today. And uh, uh, there's another one called Nemocene, I think, and there's a, there's a few others out there, but basically it's, it's electronic flashcards, and it, you can grade yourself based on your ability to remember what you've put, and you, and you make the cards yourself. So that's another thing that kind of helps you is, um, it helped me anyway, is putting the effort to to create the flashcards themselves 
just was sort of reinforcing it was just really reinforcing the knowledge that I was learning that's like writing something down that you're learning I, I, I still believe in the the most effective way of note taking is writing it down with a pen or pencil as opposed to typing it out or recording it with audio for me people learn differently but for me that's the most effective way for remembering things is to write it down write it down or, or to do it you know I can't just listen to something and 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 learn it except for history I don't know for some reason just sitting in a lecture and, and listening to history for me is is so entertaining that I remember it so again people learn in many different ways going back to the electronic flashcard system I would I would put the cards in myself and then I would grade myself when they would pop up based on if I remember them or not the easier grade that you give yourself the longer the interval is between seeing that card again the lower your score the sooner you will see that card so the more difficult ones you see more often and the easier ones you see less often and eventually the difficult ones start become easier and easier and they become more spaced apart and all doing this I never stopped adding cards I would constantly just add new things and my decks became you know 10,000 plus cards in these electronic decks it, and it wouldn't just be well I, I kind of mix it up now but in the beginning it would be full context sentences as opposed to just one character or something B because I wanted to experience the language as fully as I could and during this entire journey of learning I never once wanted to give up and I never once got tired of it and I think that's really because of how I the method that I approached it with, with not having to worry about an end goal without having to worry about pleasing any teacher or getting a certain grade by a certain deadline or anything like that I just took a very Zen approach to it if that makes any sense uh, just let it flow and see what happens and when I wanted to take the test I would take it when I'm ready so that's that's it I mean it was that's why it was never difficult for me and to prove that uh, I've, I've actually learned something I, I do have level 2 test passed I have a certificate saying that I've passed it I know enough that uh, I I can pass and get that grade two I'm I've been able to do almost anything you could imagine living in this country using Japanese I've I found my own apartment I've signed you know read and signed contracts for various things in Japanese I've done business in Japanese I, I can talk on the phone in Japanese you know there's there's not a situation that I can face that I wouldn't know what to do and if I don't know how to do it it's not because it's in Japanese it's because I haven't done it in either language yet and the way that I learn what to say is I research I mean that's uh, you know uh, so people seem to not give self-study or self-research enough credit because to me that's really how I have learned most things in my life it's just by my own motivation to do so and not every you know you could say not everyone has that motivation to learn and I think that's wrong I, I, I don't believe that to be true at all I think every single solitary human on this earth is very capable of learning almost anything you know I guess it depends on IQ but you know there's there's some studies now out there that say IQ doesn't really matter I don't know how accurate that is I mean can a person with a 75 IQ learn the things that a person with a 150 IQ can I don't know I, I don't even know what my IQ is to be honest but I know it's not the highest I know I'm not the most intelligent or the most wise person but I've been able to learn and do many things just because I know that I can I I've I've overcome 
obstacles and and challenges in my life and I've looked at that and said okay I did this I did this that I and I did this so what's to stop me from doing this new thing that I want to do it's all about how much you want to do it and that's it that's what it boils down to if you say oh I don't have time or I, I don't have the money or or I'm stuck or me you know all the that's just whining and excuses you will not get anything that you want unless you put the time, the effort, and the work into doing so. That goes for learning Japanese, that goes for getting the perfect body at the gym, that goes for anything that you have at, at, your, at your job, that goes for looking for the job that you want, starting your own business, anything. You get what you pursue. It might not fit in, into the timetable that you want it to, but if you just keep at it and don't let any mistakes or failures get you down about it, then you're going to get it eventually. And if you don't, well, you tried and you can think, well, did I try every method? You know, it, it, it just really all depends on your motivation, how much you want to do it. That's it. That's it. So is learning Japanese difficult? It's as difficult as you make it out to be. It's that simple. It's that simple. That being said, uh, after I passed the level two, grade level two of the Japanese proficiency test, I, I did spend a little time studying for, to pass level one, but I think that's, and, but after a few, months I lost my motivation for it and I haven't really studied thoroughly since I think um, there are several reasons for that one being that I would put in years and years and years and I accomplished a, a, a goal of getting a fairly high proficiency in the language so I could just take a little break I thought and since then, I mean, my speaking, I've been speaking a lot more and I've been listening a lot more and I can, I can follow most conversations. I would say probably 95% of conversations, even if the person is speaking fast, I can, I can pick up what they're saying. Um, I can hold my own in, in conversations. So I, I think I've been building on that point, but actually sitting down and studying and, and whatnot, I haven't really done that since I passed, uh, you know, the, the, that test a few years ago. But I am motivated to keep on going. Like, you know, I, I want to continue my uh, improving my writing and building more upon my conversation and getting better and better at that. I still make mistakes and I still am definitely not perfect by any means, but that's okay. I'm, I'm completely fine with that and... I can say with full confidence that once I get my drive and motivation to, to learn it again, it should should be easy as pie, easy as pie. It's just all where your priorities lie. And so that, that's where I'm at on that. So anyways, enough of my rambling. If you guys enjoyed what I had to say, then... Please share this podcast. Uh, I'm on SoundCloud, obviously. I'm on iTunes. You can you can download this podcast right to your iPhone or your iPod or whatever you got iTunes with, and you can listen to me in your car. Wouldn't that be something? A little morning motivation for you on your commute. I don't know if you'd want to listen to me for 30, 40 minutes or even an hour, but hey, your life, your choice you do what you want. Anyways, you can find me on SoundCloud, iTunes. Uh, I upload these podcasts to YouTube as well. I also have some other videos, not all, not all the old ones that I used to have on YouTube. Check those out. I'm on Twitter and there's a Facebook, Instagram, you know, I got all that stuff. So just find me, uh, either type in the podcast name or, or my name and you can find me there. All right. Well, 
Thanks for joining me in this little uh, conversation about learning Japanese. And I'll catch you guys for the next one. Take it easy.